What's up, YouTubers? It's Harpyarn89, and the voices in my head coming at you from the Duelist Den. And I am super excited today because I can finally bring you my Lyrical Witch's deck profile. Now, some of you who have followed my channel for a while, who've seen my, some of my rant videos, my top 10 videos, some of my archetype breakdown videos, uh, you will know that as a, general rule, as a general rule, I hate anything that tries to emulate Harpies. And when the Lyraloos were announced to be released in the Maximum Crisis set, I kind of felt the same way. But this past weekend, I was at a regional event, and I was opening my Maximum Crisis packs. And something I do when I open packs is I read through the cards there in the pack packs, and I actually see what they do. And as I was going through the Lyraloos cards that I got out of the packs, uh, I was drawn to them because I feel that this is the first attempt at emulating harpies that has actually succeeded because to me it feels like the Lyraloos have actually captured the spirit of the harpy archetype so I was really drawn to them and I wanted to build a deck uh, around them for my fiance because you know she's a big fan of the harpy archetype as well ever since I start got her into the game uh, several months ago and I didn't want you know to do just a cookie cutter copy of my harpy deck for her. so uh, when I was going through Lyra Loose the idea hit me this is perfect for my fiance so I decided to go ahead and build her a Lyra Loose deck problem is that Lyra Loose doesn't really have a whole crap ton of support yet I'm hoping that will change in the future but what I decided to do was to combine them with the wind witches which do a lot of the same things that the Lyra Loose do as well and in playtesting so far this deck has been really really good it is really powerful and I really really enjoy it so let's go ahead and get started with the profile first of all we run three copies of all the Lyra Loose monsters three Cobalt Sparrows, three Sapphire Swallows and three Turquoise Wobblers now ideally what you want to do for an opening hand is you want to open with Turquoise Wobbler and Cobalt Sparrow and possibly a Wind Witch Snowbell, which I'll get into that here in a minute. And here's why. Uh, Turquoise Wobbler, if you control no monsters, you can special summon it from your hand. And if it's special summoned from the hand, you can special summon a Lyra Loose monster from your hand or graveyard. Now, what you do with that is you, of course, you open with Cobalt Sparrow and you use Turquoise Wobbler to summon Cobalt Sparrow. Now when Cobalt Sparrow is special summon, you would add a level 1 winged beast type monster from your deck to your hand. In which case, you would add a Sapphire Swallow. Now a Sapphire Swallow, if you control a winged beast type monster, you special summon both this card and a level 1 winged beast type monster from your hand. So you get Sapphire Swallow out to the field. And then if you have another uh, Lyra Loose, you summon that fourth Lyra Loose to the field. Then... If you open with Snowbell, because all your Lyra Loose monsters are wind attribute, uh, you can special summon Snowbell from your hand because you can special summon it uh, if you control two or more wind monsters. So just off of opening with Turquoise Wobbler, Cobalt Sparrow, and another uh, Lyra Loose along with Snowbell, you're getting five monsters on the field right off the bat, which is very important, and I will get into that later on. But that is your ideal play. Turquoise Wobbler, Cobalt Sparrow... Snowbell and ideally another uh, Lyra Loose monster and you will pretty much get game right there especially if you open with fusion substitute in your hand as well now moving on to the rest of the wind witch engine we of course run three ice bell uh, which is if you control no monsters you special summon ice bell and then you can special summon a wind witch monster from your deck uh, the downside to this card is you cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck the turn you use this effect except level 5 or higher wind monsters. And if this card is normal special summon, you can inflict 500 damage to your opponent. Uh, next up we have the three glass spells, which if this card is normal special summon, you can add a wind witch monster from your deck to your hand except a glass spell. Uh, now, this is where the uh, 
greatness of this deck comes in. If you cannot open with your uh, Lear Loose cards, uh, then ideally you hopefully open with Ice Bell because you special summon Ice Bell. Uh, and then when I spell special summon, you special summon glass bell, and then off of glass bell, you add snow bell to your hand, and then you special summon snow bell, and you can go into your synchro plays off of that. So, uh, if you can open with either an ice bell or a turquoise wobbler, you're going to be going off. Uh, for the final monster in the deck, we of course run Max C. Now, Max C is very, very important because now. If your opponent's running any deck that special summons monsters, Maxi is going to allow you to get more resources in your hand via drawing. And while we're on the topic of drawing, uh, we of course have our stable draw spells as One Day of Peace, Upstart Goblin. Uh, then for Searchers, we also have One for One and Terraforming. And then for the final draw spell, we also have Shared Ride. Uh, Shared Ride is a great staple for any deck in my opinion because almost every deck these days does a shit ton of searching and with Shared Ride every time your opponent adds a card from the deck or graveyard to their hand except by drawing them you immediately draw one card so it's pretty much a max C for search effects. Now for the fusion card we run three fusion substitutes and I was really on the fence about this uh, between running either fusion substitute or polarization. Uh, mainly because polarization uh, lets you use cards in your hand as well, whereas Fusion Substitute only lets you use cards on your field. Um, but with the uh, Fusion Monsters I have in the deck, uh, both of them require an extra deck monster to Fusion Summon, so obviously that monster is already going to be on the field. So Fusion, I decided to go with Fusion Substitute just because it made more sense uh, over polarization in the long run. Uh, especially since uh, you can banish it from your graveyard to return a fusion monster in your graveyard to the extra deck and then draw a card. Uh, in addition to that, I'm also running fusion recoveries. Uh, now fusion recovery and the three recycling pants I'm running, uh, these are kind of tricky. Uh, you want to make sure you keep at least one fusion substitute in your graveyard at all times. That way you have a target for fusion recovery and fusion recycling plant as they let you get uh, polymerizations from your graveyard to your hand and as fusion substitutes name is always treated as polymerization whether it's in your hand field or whether it's in your hand graveyard or deck then you can target it with both fusion recovery and fusion recycling plant but like I said you know you want to make sure you keep at least one fusion substitute in your graveyard at all times unless of course you're guaranteed to win the game that turn uh, that way you always have a target for your recycling plants and your recoveries uh, then we have our Dark Holes and Regekis. Uh, now, obviously, you know, these are majorly important in this deck, as keeping your opponent's field clear is super, super important in this deck. And then we, of course, have our three Solemn Strikes. Just in case, you know, our opponent puts something on the field that can shut us down, we want to be able to Solemn Strike that card uh, just to make sure it's not around anymore so we can go off. Uh, for the extra deck, we're going to start with uh, the Xyz Monster, which is... Uh, Lyra Loose Assembly Nightingale. Now what Assembly Nightingale does is it requires two or more level 1 monsters to Xyz Summon. So you can get up to five Xyz, or five materials on the field really easily and I showed you how earlier. Uh, and then just go into Assembly Nightingale. And it gains 200 attack for each material attached to it. So if it has five, five materials and you can actually get with this deck uh, six or even seven materials on this card if you play it right. But for right now, let's just say you only get the five materials on it. That's a thousand attack on this card. Uh, now you may be thinking, well, a thousand attack isn't really all that great. Well, this is where it gets even better because this card can attack your opponent directly. And while this card has Xyz material, it can attack up to that number of times during each battle phase. So if you have five materials attached to this card, we, even with only a thousand attack, that's 5,000 points of direct attack damage you're hitting to your opponent. So even if they have a monster that can attack over it, then you're still, you still have the ability to attack directly with this card and get 5,000 damage to your opponent with a fully powered Assembly Nightingale. In addition to that, once per turn during either player's turn, you can detach a material from this card. And for the rest of this turn, Lyra Loose monsters you control cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects and you take no battle damage from those battles. So 
even if you can't kill your opponent once you get this on on the field off of the five direct attacks, or however many direct attacks you get on it, you det simply detach a material and it's safe from being destroyed by battle and you're not going to be taking any battle damage from attacks involving this card. So this card is just really, really freaking broken and you don't even have to be running Lyrilus. If you run any deck that spams level 1 monsters, this card is just fucking amazing. Now moving on to the fusion monsters, we run 3 Lyrilus Independent Nightingale. Now this is where Lyrilus uh, Assembly Nightingale gets really overpowered. Because if you get this on the field and you have Fusion Substitute in your hand, you simply use uh, uh, Lear Loose Assembly Nightingale and you get another Lear Loose on the monster, or Lear another Lear Loose monster on the field as well in order to do this. And then you Fusion Summon into Independent Nightingale. And what Independent Nightingale does is if this card is Fusion Summon using an Xyz monster whose original name includes Lear Loose as Fusion Material, you increase this card's level by the number of Xyz monsters that were attached to that monster. So however many Xyz materials you had attached to your Assembly Nightingale, then that's the number, or that's the amount that this card's level is going to be increased. So at max, you can get this up to 5 or 7 or whatever, you know. You At max, you can possibly get this up to a level 8 monster. But we're just going to go with the uh, five materials attached to Assembly Nightingale for the example. So that brings it up to a level 6. In addition to that, this card gains 500 attack times its level. So that's an additional 3,000 attack points for a 4,000 attack point total. In addition to that, this card is unaffected by other card effects. And once per turn, you can inflict damage to your opponent equal to this card's level times 500. So say this card is a level 6. That's 3,000 points of effect damage you're doing. Plus, you have a 5,000 attack point or a 4,000 attack point beater on the field. So, this card is just fucking ridiculous as well. For the next fusion monster, we are running uh, three Wind Witch Glass Bells. This requires Winter Bell and another Wind Witch monster to fusion summon. And the effect states that uh, you can target one monster you play as graveyard to the end phase. This card's name becomes that target's original name and replace those effects with that target's original effects. So you can use pretty much any monster in any graveyard for that. So you can even use your own monsters in your graveyard to go into something like an independent nightingale or, you know, pretty much anything. You know, this card has so much potential, it's not even crazy. But anyway, um, if this card in your possession is destroyed by opponent's card by battle or card effects into your graveyard, you can target a winner bell and a level 4 lower win winch monster in your graveyard and special summon them. So not only can this card take on the effect of any monster in the graveyard, but it also has a built-in recursion effect. Uh, for the Synchros, we of course run Winter Bell. Now Winter Bell is essentially uh, allows you to deal burn damage and it's fodder for your level 8 Synchro plays and your Crystal Bell plays. Uh, for the other level 7, we have Clearwing Synchro Dragon. Uh, it's really great to uh, stop level 5 or higher monster effects. Um, that's pretty much its primary for purpose, you know, stopping level up five or higher monster effects and destroying them. And then it gains attack to the, or uh, it gains um, uh, attack equal to the destroyed monster's attack until the end of this turn if it negated that monster's effect. Uh, next up, we also run Stardust Dragon, kind of necessity because, you know, we don't like our cards being destroyed by card effects. Uh, then we run two Crystal Wing Synchro Dragons. I'm not going to go into this because everybody should know what this does by now. But anyway, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this deck. As always, make sure you like the deck or like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave your comments in the section below as to what you thought about this deck. Um, this is just the beta test version of this deck, so if you have suggestions for it, I would love to hear them. Uh, ways you think this deck could be more consistent, just let me know. Because like I said, this is just the beta test build of this deck. It does have a little bit of work left to be done probably, I don't know. Um, it's doing really well the way it's built right now, so maybe not. I mean, who knows? But if you have an idea on how to improve this deck, please let me know in the comment section below. Uh, as always, make sure you check out the Duelist End Facebook page. Uh, I up put updates as to how many videos I'll be doing throughout the week on that page every Sunday. So make sure you check that page for updates to the channel. Uh, until next time, this is Harpy 89 and the voices in my head, signing off. Take
Cause I'm running side by side